Let's talk about the amortized cost model for investments. <clears throat> what is the amortized cost model? The amortized cost model is where we carry investments on our statement of financial position at amortized cost, which is the present value of the investment at the purchase date, which should also be the purchase price. Present value of the investment at the purchase date which is equal to the purchase price. This uh, cost is, am is adjusted by, the, by any amortization of any premium or discount as the bond progresses. So amortized cost is the original purchase price plus the amortization of any premium or discount. Because premiums or discounts are amortized directly against the investment on our statement of financial position, any amortization of the premium or discount will affect the amortized cost value. IFRS 9, which is effective January 1st, 2018, only permits companies to classify investments as amortized cost if they intend to hold the bond to maturity. The bond will not be sold but the company has a history of holding the bond to maturity to obtain the cash flow from the bond as throughout the period from purchase to maturity. Therefore, after the adoption of IFRS 9, the use of the amortized cost model is expected to significantly decrease as this is quite a specific criteria. However, it is a still a valid valuation model for investments as long as the required criteria is met. It's important to note that IFRS requires the use of the effective interest method to amortize the discount or premium on a bond. This, in order to obtain the correct numbers for your journal entries, it is important that you create an effective interest amortization schedule if the company is following IFRS. Let's take a look at an example of how to account for an amortized cost investment. So January 1st, 2016, you purchased 12% bonds with a maturity value of 300,000 and you pay 322,745. The market rate of interest for similar investments is 10%. The bonds mature January 1st, 2020 and interest is paid every December 31st. The company follows IFRS and has classified the bonds as amortized cost. And our requirement in this example is to provide, is to record all required journal entries between January 1st, 2016 and the maturity of the bond. So our first journal entry is pretty straightforward. We need to record this transaction, January 1st, 2016, we're gonna purchase the bond. So let's go January 1st, 2016 purchase bond. Now the journal entry here should be pretty straightforward. We know we're going to need to debit an investment to put an investment that we purchased on our balance sheet as an asset and we're going to need to credit presumably cash, whatever we paid the investment, whatever we paid for the investment with. So when we record an amortized cost investment, we are going to record it as bond investment because only bonds can be classified at amortized cost under IFRS 9. Bond investment at amortized cost. So this is the label that we're going to use for our account. And our credit here is going to be cash. Now what amount are we going to put for this journal entry? Well, let's look back at the question. We know that we always record bonds on our balance sheet at the present value of the cash flows associated with the bond. Now in this example, they've told us what we paid for the bond. So we bought this bond at a premium. We bought it, we paid more for it than the face value of the bond. So we don't need to worry about calculating the present value in this example because the present value has been given. So all we need to do is record 322,745 as our purchase price. Excellent. Now we have the bond on our balance sheet. What do we have to do next? Well, there are no fair market value adjustments for bonds. 
So the next thing we need to do is simply look at when our next, when our interest payment is going to be due. So we're going to have to record the coupon payment for December 31st, 2016. But before we can record a coupon payment for an amortized cost investment, we need to think about the amortization of the premium or the discount. So the first thing we actually need to do is create an effective interest amortization schedule. So let's do that. So in our schedule, we're going to have the date, we're going to have cash received, we're going to have interest revenue, we're going to have the difference, and then we're going to have the carrying value of our bond. So let's look at what these things mean. Cash received is going to be our coupon, our face value, our bond, times the stated rate. So this is what is specifically on the paper that we obtained when we obtained ownership of the bond. The face value and the stated rate. So <clears throat> interest receivable is going to be the carrying value of our bond times the market rate. The difference, if we say A and B, A minus B, the difference, this is going to be the amortization of our premium or discount. And this is simply going to be the carrying value of our bond. So let's fill in what we know. So we know we purchased the bond January 1st, 2016. Then we know we're going to have a coupon payment every December 31st. So we're going to have December 31st, 2016, December 31st, 2017, December 31st, 2018, December 31st, 2019, and December 31st, 2020. So this is maturity here. So let's fill in what information we can find. So we know that the carrying value <clears throat> when we purchase the bond is the amount we put it on our balance sheet for. This is our carrying value right here. So we are starting carrying value January 1st, 2016. It's going to be 322,745. Okay, so our coupon payment here. We're going to have the face value of our bond, 300,000, times the stated rate. What's the stated rate? It says it's a 12% bond. So it's going to be 300,000 times 12%. And this is an annual coupon, so there's no need to adjust it for a number of months. It's for a full year. So this is going to be 36,000. The thing about our coupon payment is that it's always the same. So this is going to be 36000 every year. Our interest revenue is going to be our carrying value times the market rate. This is a calculation that is going to be changing. So our first year, December 31st, 2016, our, we've got a carrying value of 322745 times, if we take this, times the market rate. The market rate is going to be, says the market rate of interest for similar investments is 10%. This is our market rate. We're gonna multiply this by 10%. And that is going to give me my interest revenue. My interest revenue is 32,275, rounded. The difference between these two numbers is going to be my amortization. So A minus B is negative 3726. And that makes sense because I'm trying to pull, I want to pull this value down. I know that at the end of the bond, I need this to be at 300,000. The bond has to be at the maturity value on our balance sheet or has to be at the face value on our balance sheet at maturity. So I'm going to decrease the value of the bond because you can see here we've issued that we've bought this bond at a premium. So my revised carrying value 
which is simply going to be 322745 minus this 3726 is 319020. So let's just continue filling in the rest of the table. So then we take 319020 times the market rate of 10%. My interest revenue is for the next year here is 31902. My difference is going to be minus 4098. And my new carrying value is 314921. 20, that's 2017. 2018 is going to be my interest revenue. It's going to be 314921 times 10% which is going to be 31492. The difference between 31492, sorry, the difference between 36 and 31492 is going to be negative 4508. And my carrying value is simply this, these numbers here, 31041. 2019 is going to be 31041. My difference is going to be 4959. My new carrying value is going to be 305455. And the last year, my <coughs> interest revenue, 305455 times 10%, is going to be 30545. My difference, 5455, five, five. and my new carrying value is 300,000, which is perfect. That's exactly what I needed at the end of the period of the bond. I need it to be on my balance sheet at the face value. So now let's record our entries, our entry for the coupon payment for December 31st, 2016. So we're going to have debit cash so it's the fullest coupon December 31st 2016 so I'm gonna have debit cash and every year I'm gonna receive 36,000 of cash that's just a fact that's what I'm gonna receive from the coupon then I'm going to credit interest revenue and I'm simply gonna pick up the number from my table here I have this number for interest revenue 31902 and that's what I'm going to record and I'm also going to credit the amortization of the discount and we amortize the discount directly against the investment so my credits actually going to go against my initial investment account bond investment at amortized cost and I'm going to amortize 372 and that's my coupon payment for December. So the next entry we need to make is simply the coupon payment for December 31st, 2017. So let's go ahead and do that. December 31st, 2017 coupon. We're simply going to pick up these numbers in the table for December 31st, 2017. So, actually this number here, I'm just seeing, should have been corrected. This number here was actually this year, so it should have been 32275. You just have to be careful to pick up the numbers in the right row of the table. That's the year I picked up there. Now I'm going to do December 31st, 2017, which is very simply debit cash same amount every year we're going to get $36,000 worth of cash then I'm going to go credit interest revenue and it's simply the number in my table here so here I'm in this year December 31st 2017 it's going to be this row so my interest revenue is going to be 31902 
and my amortization of the discount is going to be 4098 and it's going to go directly against the bond investment again bond investment at amortized cost this is 4098 every year we would make the same entry so december 31st 2018 2019 and 2020 we would amortize the bond and at the end of that period it would be on our balance sheet for three hundred thousand dollars so let's skip the rest of the entries we'll just assume that we made december 31st 2018 2018 18 2019 and 2020 So we made those then at maturity so journal entry to record maturity of the bond so at maturity we are going to have the cash flow from the bond the 300,000 is due back to us so we're actually going to debit cash for 300,000 and we're going to credit the investment because we're going to derecognize it we no longer have the investment once we get the cash back. So it's going to be credit bond investment at amortized cost. And at this point, we've got the cash back and we no longer own the investment. This is the end of our transactions. Hopefully this can help you to see why it's so important that we amortize the premium or discount because we know that we're only going to get back 300,000 at the end of the bond, but we did pay more than that for it. So we need to reduce our interest income each year from the 36,000, the amount that's actually going through our income statement is less because we're still incorporating the fact that we paid more for the bond than we will receive at maturity. And that's due to the fact that the rate on the bond is higher than the market rate. That's why we issued, that's why we paid a premium for this bond. It's paying more than other bonds in the market. So you can see, even though we got 36,000 in cash here, we're actually only recognizing interest income on our income statement of less than 36,000, 31,902. And the difference is going to our balance sheet to reduce the value of the investment, bring that investment down over its life. We're amortizing that premium down. Excellent. Well, I hope that that helped clarify the amortized cost tutorial. Generally speaking, because IFRS 9 requires that, that bonds not be sold when they're classified as amortized cost, generally speaking, there shouldn't be any sales of these bonds. So it's really just making sure that you're recording the coupon payments correctly, that you're amortizing premiums or discounts, that you're thinking about the dates on which the coupon is due. In this example, the coupon was due on December 31st, 2017, which is fantastic for accounting purposes. It means we don't have to worry about any accruals. Uh, however, other examples may be more complicated and we will cover an example where a bond is purchased in between interest coupon dates in another tutorial. And then make sure that the bond is on your balance sheet or your statement of financial position at face value at maturity. And then you simply do recognize the bond. Thanks for watching.